This is Sue Bunch from Back to Back Fiber Products. Today I thought I'd give a few tips and tricks about how to do three-dimensional felting. I have a lot of questions from uh, school teachers on how to work with their students, uh, either with a 3D project that uh, does not require an armature or one that may want to experiment with doing an armature. So I'm gonna to try to just go through quickly and give you some tips and tricks that might make it easier for you in the classroom. Uh, this material is uh, core wool, and you can see how it comes here. Um, big, I sell it to folks in, in rolls, different sizes, depending on the projects they're, they're making. But it's very fluffy and lightweight. You'll also need to have a felting needle and if you haven't used these before, at this end of the needle are little barbs. And if you look at it closely or feel them, it feels like sandpaper. They look like fish hooks under a microscope. And as they punch through animal fibers, like this sheep wool, every kind of animal fiber, every fiber has scales on it. And these barbs grab onto those scales and uh, form it into, um, a felted project, whether it's a two-dimensional thing or a three-dimensional project. So I'm gonna just talk to you first about uh, making shapes for three-dimensional things. This is just a quick kind of overview. So for example, here's some uh, small little project, a little bird. I've had some uh, schools doing things on uh, state birds. So you can see it's just small and a fairly quick and easy project. It originally started out as an oval as you probably can maybe see. And then I use scissors to cut off the bottom so that it could uh, sit down and, and have this little uh, more of like a bird shape. So this one was fairly easy. So you need to start out by making that oval shape. Uh, now you're gonna have long pieces like this and I recommend that you um, work with smaller pieces for uh, more experienced felters and beginning felters, if you use smaller pieces, you're gonna be more successful. Now, when you tear this apart, do not put your hands close together. You can see how hard I'm pulling, it will not pull apart. You have to put your hands further apart and then pull. And that's because the fibers are long and when you put your hands too close together, their nuts not gonna pull off. Then after you pull off a piece, a smaller piece that you wanna work with, I would divide this again and just easily split it apart, something like about like this. You could even split it again, but let's start with this for now. Now, the next thing you're gonna do, because we're gonna start making that oval shape. We're, one of the things that when people first start felting that they don't do is to um, not felt tightly enough. And so this takes some practice and and something that it's a very kind of a slow process. It's, it's people want to finish their projects quickly and it doesn't happen that much with felting. So do you see what I'm doing? I'm just rolling it up as tightly as I can. And then I can roll the ends in. You see how I'm rolling the sides in like this and then hold it there and just punch in at the fold there until it just gently holds together. And then you keep rolling like that and tucking the ends in. And so that's one way to get it started. And for yourself, if you're wanting to do felting or if you're teaching students of any age, and then just keep rolling and trying to keep it as tight as you can because this will speed up the whole project because you're making just the base. Then you're gonna be adding the colors and the textures to it to create the character that you want. So do you see here what I have isn't very big, but I'm going to just keep felting this right now just to hold it together. And I'll spend a little bit of time working on it like this to try to get it to hold together and be very firm. So that's that's one way to do it. Now another way 
that works for some people is to take your piece like this and tie a knot. You can tie one, two, three knots, whatever you want, but pull it really tight like that. And then you can tie another knot over the top of that. And this is getting a really dense inner core. And depending on the class that you're teaching, this might be a method that would speed things up because I know a lot of times in a classroom in schools, there's not that much time. So now you've got that much, you've got these little tails hanging out and you can just tuck that around like that and punch that in and cover up the knot that you've created there to begin with. So I'm just gonna felt this around here and just to get that started, to get the, the base started. And then same here, just cover up the knot like that. And that's a nice way to get started and get a nice dense uh, beginning core to work from. So I haven't quite got it finished yet here, but you get the general idea and you can see here, but you'd still have a lot more to do, a lot more felting to get it very, very dense. Now, one other way that you can do, I'm just giving you some tips and hints here that you can see what might work for you. You can take um, pipe cleaners and I use two colors just so that you could see and you lay them one on top of another and you uh, twist them. So I'm right-handed, so I hold my left hand here, and I, off my right hand, I twist toward me so that it twists evenly. So if you were doing a project where you wanted to, this was gonna be the body or the head or the legs or something, then, uh, and you want to, when it's finished, maybe pose the head or the legs, this might be the way to, might be your best choice. But this works pretty nice um, also for making the base. So what you can do is, I'm gonna cut myself another little uh, piece of the core wall and I'm gonna spread it apart again. So I'm gonna lay down my um, pipe cleaner base here and I'm gonna fluff out the core wall and lay it down on your foam work surface. Now you're gonna, we're gonna use this um, pipe cleaner as a base and as a way to hold on to it while you're working. So I'm gonna fold this over and do like one or two turns, and then I'm gonna felt this right next to that where uh, it's folded over right next to the pipe cleaner core. And then I'm gonna turn it some more. And just keep turning it and felt it down like that. And keep turning it and punching it and felting it. You might have to pull the ends in just to keep it a little bit more even. like that and keep rolling. Like that, just keep rolling it and punching it. Now, at this point, you can use this part as a way to hold on to it. So if you were doing a little bit uh, larger three-dimensional project and you were um, needing to make a body for something, I got the core wool tangled up in the pipe cleaner over here. You can use, here's, I'm right-handed, so I use my left hand to turn this as I'm, as I'm punching. So punch along like this and turn it and turn it and keep punching. Now, one thing about using pipe cleaners 
is that you have to be careful uh, not to break your needle by punching too hard on the wire. So that's one thing that's a little bit different about using pipe cleaners. You have to be a little bit more uh, careful about that. But as you move along like this, it becomes more and more dense and you just keep working and adding to it. So you can cover up this end and then depending on what size you're doing, eventually you can just cut off the pipe cleaner here and this will become your base. I'll give you an example. The other one that um, I'll show you here is this little sheep we've been working on. So the body here underneath all the fuzz <laughs> is a core like this and made on a pipe cleaner. And so the one that um, I did to show you here, I did the same way on this uh, pipe cleaners, but I kept adding more and punching more and making it. It's, I know it's difficult in a video to see, but it's very, very dense. And that's what you're working toward. And for beginning filters, sometimes that's hard to understand but it's, it's really important in, in needle felting to get in the habit of punching very, very densely. So you can see where it started from and where it ended up from and how it became the body of an, an animal like maybe like this. So after you've done that, just keep working on that and adding more layers. And it's better if you just use thin layers and just keep moving and take your time, not be in a rush. This might uh, take a few hours, um, but in the end, it makes a more successful project depending on you know what the shape is in the project that you're doing. This section, I'm just um, share with you a little bit about how I'm gonna work on adding a head and it could be any kind of an animal or a made up character that you or the kids might be working on. But you see what I've done? I like the idea of using the pipe cleaner and done the same way as I showed you previously, but doesn't have to, it's not gonna be so big. And this way I can, the pipe cleaner goes all the way down here into the nose and you can see how I'll be able to uh, move it around, uh, pose it when it gets onto the animal itself. But what I want to do is to keep this end fluffy because you'll see uh, later what I'll be doing is uh, adding it onto the body um, of the sheep here. And that's the part when I, I'll be cutting off the pipe cleaner here. And this is where I'll be uh, adding this onto the body of the sheep that I'm making. So that's how I uh, make the heads, or it could even be uh, arms or something like that. Um, but it's done the same way. What I'm gonna demonstrate to you now is uh, a method I've been using to um, put legs on these uh, small uh, animals I'm making. Uh, as a type of an armature. This is not a skeletal type armature. It's just a way to uh, add legs that can be posable. That's uh, an easier way to go. So what I did was, I, as before, I took two pipe cleaners and I twisted them together. You can maybe see here how they're twisted. And what's gonna happen is, um, I'm gonna add this to the body form here. I'm gonna make a cut here and we'll show you that later and we'll add the legs onto it. So we'll have two sets of legs and we'll cut here and here. Now, other people have got other ideas. If you wanna set the character down like this, maybe you want to have legs that go this direction. You can make the, the slices in the body go that direction, whatever you want. And after you get your shape, of course, then you can add your different colors or textures to it for whatever kind of a character that you're gonna make. So what I do is um, after I've twisted the pipe cleaners together, I make a little loop at the end like that. And then I take a small piece, I take a really a small piece of the core wool, really quite thin you can see here. And I start uh, and in this little loop, 
I just tuck a little piece in there and fold it over the top like that. And then you press down the pipe cleaner so that holds it in there. And then you start twisting the roving around the pipe cleaner. And you can just twist it around like that. Maybe it's just as easy to lay it down on the foam like that. And then we're gonna start again and we're gonna punch uh, right there at the, as it folds over. And, and you can punch a little bit at the end to cover up the pipe cleaner and make a little flat foot on the end. and keep rolling it up like that. And punching. And it's a nice, you can hold on to the pipe cleaner and twist it like that. And as you're turning it, keep punching until it all gets nice and dense and evenly formed. So if you're concerned about punching your fingers, this method with the pipe cleaners works pretty good. Now you see I got my needle caught in the, in the pipe cleaner. So that's one thing that um, is different about working with pipe cleaners, that you just need to be uh, careful and uh, not uh, break your needle that way. So I, are, I already worked on the other end. You can see I've it probably needs to be punched more and added some more to it but this will give you a general idea of what I'm talking about. Then it'll get folded over like this, and I'll show you in the next step how we add it to the body. We'll be right back. Okay, I hope you've uh, got your uh, couple pairs of legs finished, and I'll show you how I've, uh, my new method of attaching them here. You can see I've attached uh, these legs here and I still have to finish uh, felting around here a little bit and getting it formed up against the body but I'll show you how I um, attach the legs so take some sharp scissors and we're just going to start cutting into that um, fall the felted body that you've made and sometimes it still takes a little bit to figure out you don't want to cut it all off but you have to cut enough so it will fit down in there. So if you can see that. Maybe I'll cut a little bit more here. Like that. Then you take the legs and you slide them in there. Hopefully you can see that okay. And in fact, I think I'll cut it just a little bit more so we'll have we'll be able to uh, felt the felt it closed there. Okay, now I'll put it in here, and then I take a minute and check to see that the legs are maybe about the length I want them to be, and sort of even, as close as possible anyway. Oops, sorry, I'm going to have to adjust again. There, I think I'm okay with that now. Now, when I get up to that point, at that little s slit there, that's where I'm gonna start felting it together. So you just have to be careful again with the um, pipe cleaners that are down in that little slot. But just like that, you can work a little on this side and then you can turn it around and work from this side until you get that nice and uh, dense in there. And if you keep felting a while, be very careful with your needle so you don't break it on the wire. But just keep working on it there. And you can always add uh, a little extra fiber over the top if you need to as well. But at this point, you'll probably wanna be adding some different colors or textures 
for whatever kind of animal uh, you're thinking to make. So it will cover that all up. So if you can see there how that's worked. So now I've got my legs attached and I can finish um, adding the uh, core wool there on the legs to finish that up. And then add my colors, whatever that's gonna be for whatever project you're working on. Now, as far as uh, attaching the head, um, you remember I, I showed you to this before, very similar to how we did the body and it still has the wire attached. So now what I'm gonna do is to cut off the pipe cleaner here, like that. And we have these little fluffy ends. And so we're gonna attach that now to the uh, body. This is gonna end up being another sheep. So I'm just gonna put it right on here and kind of look to see that I've got it uh, in the shape and the location I want. And then I start needle felting it down. And just keep working, it takes time. Make sure you get it on nice and firm. There it comes, and also watch out for the wires. Other than that, you've got, and like I said, this is just a different way of um, doing an armature that you might wanna try for yourself or with your students. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, my email is sue at learntoneedlefelt.com and I'll be glad to help you out if you have specific questions about this project or about anything with your own personal project or things that you're doing at school. Thanks for stopping by. Hope to talk to you soon.